Since 1983, fame has helped business and education work for Maine. Contact the authority, the Finance Authority of Maine. You're watching Maine Biz Sunday, Maine's business news source. We are back with our panel and ready to continue the discussion on the proposed Oxford County Casino. Um, I guess I want to move to the, this is a business show, so really, and it's interesting, we've got two kind of competing business groups on this issue. So I really want to talk about the business issues here. One is every week we talk to uh, businesses every week about access to capital, access to workers, and access to market. That's the three things they always talk about. Well, I think you got, casinos got access to capital. I think that's fine. That part's covered. They got access to workers. I think we've talked about that. I want to talk about customers, access to markets. Are there enough gamblers in the state to really do this? Are there enough in New England to do this? Is this going to be a zero-sum game? Let me just read this to you. William Thompson, professor in gambling researcher at the University of Nevada, Nevada, Las Vegas, said in a July 2010 Maine Biz feature article that regional economies often suffer from casinos even as local economies and government budget items may benefit. Thompson said, quote, it's going to be a northern New England money being gambled at Oxford County Casino. If you're hurting the New Hampshire economy, you're not really helping the Maine economy. So, I'm going to start with the Oxford County side. What's your response to that? Well, our response is that we uh, commissioned uh, University of Maine uh, Professor Todd Gabe to do an economic study for us, and that's available on our website, TakeChargeMaine.com, where people can look at the entire study. But in that study, uh, he uh, projected that we would generate, I believe, roughly around $127 million a year in revenue. and. Uh, a multiplier effect of that are somewhere in the vicinity of two hundred and eighty million dollars and that's where he came up with the numbers how we we come up with the numbers for the tax revenue and so forth uh... professor gabe according to his numbers believes that those numbers are viable and that they are real okay let me come back to the other side then uh... are there are there enough i guess that's my issue is uh, will they will they be drawing gam uh, those dollars away from hollywood slots and others or how will this work how do you um, see it Gaming operations are generally consumptive, like putting in a Walmart in the middle of an economy, unless they're capable of drawing visitors from away. Okay. And so what you ideally want to do, I mean, that's what makes Hollywood Slots potentially such a great asset for our community, because it is, it is right on the way to the number one visitor destination in the state of Maine. So as we look at that opportunity in our region, we're hopeful that we can begin to draw some more money from outside the region because of its location. I think the other thing to bear in mind right now is there is overcapacity in the gaming industry in New England and really nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, big layoffs down in the Connecticut casinos uh, the last couple of months. And it sort of begs the question, uh, you know, d does this facility need to have all the benefits of this bill that basically give it a monopoly uh, because the market won't support a free market approach to gaming in the state of Maine. Okay. And, and, and I really think that that's one of the questions people need to ask. Are, are, we, are we creating an opportunity that uh, really isn't going to radiate from, uh, out from Oxford and, and, and it has to be that way simply because the market won't support it otherwise? Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to ask a question about jobs because it really seems to me that's, that's what's at the heart mm -hmm. of this thing. Will it really create jobs? How many of the jobs? What are they? Our friend and your friend, Dennis Bailey, Executive Director of Casinos Know, says it's not economic development. It takes as many jobs out of the economy as it will add and probably more. We aren't going to be the next Foxwoods. We aren't going to be the next Atlantic City. And who would want to be, he says. I'll just take the, it'll just take the money away from local economies and regional economies and put it into the pocket of slick casino operators. That's Dennis's point of view on this, and we understand that. Uh, but I want to ask you guys, what kind of jobs will it create? Are they good jobs? I think, around jobs? I think they are. They're consistent. They're, they're, uh, they'll be ongoing. You know, as, you, as, as it has been stated, approximately 3,000 jobs will be created over Give, a period of tell time. Us, tell us what kind. You know, is, it, and, and I guess probably Jim could probably answer that more specifically, but I will tell you that, that, for example, when it comes to actually building the resort itself, I mean, there will be, there will be uh, jobs like construction jobs that will be created to get the resort built. And then you get into the people who are going to be actually working at the casino, you know, the, the waiters, the waitresses, uh, the management team, the administrative team, and that type of thing. And, and those jobs are, are very, very, very important, I think, not only to the Oxford County area, but to the entire state of Maine. Because my feeling is that there will be people that will be coming to that area to work at the casino. And they won't necessarily all be from Oxford Hills or from Oxford County. So I think there is a, an, an opportunity for people to be uh, acquiring jobs in this, in this particular industry with this resort from all over the state of Maine. And the other point I want to make very, very briefly okay. is, that, is that you were talking about are we going to draw people 
that are going to that are going to impact yeah, the, the, the economy. Yeah, they have the chamber going to duke it. Yeah, the economy yeah. the economy adversely. Not all. I think it's going to. He says he's on the gateway well, to the most busiest, best attraction in Maine. Well, he probably Why is. Want to go to he didn't tell me what it was, though. So yeah. I got. So I have to. I have to assume what it was. No. Brewer, Getting back to Brewer, that. I think. <laughs> having said that, having said that, you know, we're on Route 26, and this is and this is presumably okay. one of the locations that they're thinking about putting this resort on, and that is a huge thoroughfare for skiers, uh, you know, for for yeah. people who are recreating throughout the western part of the state of Maine. And we feel very strongly that this will enhance our tourism industry. It will bring more people into the area. Uh, this will create another air, another place where people can stop and they can they can lodge and they can and they can stay. We're also thinking that this will also create opportunities for businesses to come in because this will be a business conference center as well as a okay. casino and a resort. Okay. Yep. Uh, and the issue I think is different regions could say the same thing. Absolutely. And why should we be there? I Absolutely. Think that part. I want to ask a broader question, Dan, and I'm going to start with Dan on this one. Uh, about uh, the, uh, this as an economic development strategy for Maine. Um, what about Maine's brand? Does this fit with Maine brand and and the whole quality of place that we learned so much from the Brookings Institute about? Will a casino and gambling, will the expansion of that industry, would it really help Maine's brand? And will it work here? Well, um, first of all, as a resident of Brewer, it is a fine destination. <laughs> but, I knew um, that's what they were talking about. <laughs> but uh, uh, to your question specifically, uh, this, this coalition is not necessarily opposed to the expansion of gaming. It's just opposed mm -hmm. to the uh, inherent uh, uh, flaws within this proposal. So um, t to your question, we feel that, that the issue with this proposal are, are things that are bad that, that don't go in line with what uh, Maine is about in terms of business. Unequal taxation, an unlevel playing field, a loophole that would lower that, that taxation, a 100-mile uh, radius around the facility uh, that prohibits any other gaming from, uh, facilities from coming in, basically uh, monopolizing the industry uh, throughout all of southern Maine. Uh, we feel that that is the wrong way to conduct business in the state of Maine, and uh, it's just not the, the, okay. the main way of doing things. I want to follow up with one question for for you guys. Um, you haven't I haven't seen a lot of very high profile. I'm even seeing commercials, obviously, from the Oxford folks. Haven't seen a lot from your side of the aisle. Haven't seen a lot of money racked up to do that. Uh, are you going to mount a campaign? Uh, have you conceded already? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, thank you for asking that. Sure. But no, uh, we have not conceded at all. In fact, we will uh, be putting that strategy forward as the time comes. Okay. Um, in terms of concession, now what we're seeing right now is that uh, things are um, uh, very positive. For uh, once people hear our message, they they understand that the proposal is flawed. And okay. um, all right, uh, we're going to have to break break right there. But I'm going to keep you around for our afterthought segment. So we're going to drill into a little bit more detail, and that'll be shown on the web so people can tune in to, to see that as well. So we appreciate that. So stick around. Sure. Thanks. You can catch more of this discussion in our exclusive afterthought segment seen only on the web. Just go to mainbiz.biz and click on the Mainbiz Sunday link. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Mainbiz Sunday is made possible in part by funding provided by the Finance Authority of Maine.